Welcome to Geography 485 585L Internet Mapping. Module 2.2 Web Based Mapping Clients, the Google Maps API, Part 1. This week we will be discussing what an API is or application programming interface is, and we'll be specifically talking about the Google Maps API in terms of the version that we will be working with in the class some background information about the Google Maps API, including a discussion of key components that allow you to enable different capabilities within a Google Maps based viewer. And then we will discuss a variety of examples that highlight some of the capabilities of the Google Maps API. So first, what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface, and you can see here a definition that has been taken out of the Wikipedia, but an API boils down to an interface that is published by an application or programming language that allows for other programs to communicate with that programming interface. So you could think of it as a complement to the human interfaces that we are more accustomed to working with in terms of web applications. So an application programming interface provides the machine-to-machine -machine communication between uh, components, in this case, on the Internet. So what we're working with here is a Google Maps API that provides the ability to communicate with Google's servers that are providing a set of map services where that communication uses Google's API and you write code in your application, in this case a web page, to request information and content from Google servers to display in your application. So the communication here is between your web browser that is running the HTML and JavaScript code that you've written and the Google servers that are generating the map images and providing back the content that goes into the map page that you're displaying in your website. So for this class we are working with version 3.0 of Google's JavaScript API. Google also provides several other APIs um, but we will be using their JavaScript API. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to Google's site and look at some of the other APIs to get information about those. In the case of the JavaScript API that we will be working with, um, it is freely usable for free applications. There are limitations in using this for applications that users have to pay for. Um, it is subject to Google's terms of service, which they do have the right to change. And uh, more recently, they've actually added to those terms of service limitations on the number of map requests that can be submitted per day by applications. And this is causing some application developers to rethink their use of Google Maps in their applications. And one of the significant changes that occurred with version 3 of their API was that applications that are communicating with Google services using the API are no longer required to have an API key, essentially a specific code that has been provided by Google to enable those applications to send requests to Google systems. If you're looking at some older documentation for the Google Maps API, you may see references to this API key. But again, the version of the API that we're working with, which is the current version, does not require this API key. But that's something that you may encounter as you're looking through online information or other published uh, references relating to Google's API. So in terms of some key capabilities in version 3 of the JavaScript API are number one, interactive maps that are based upon the mapping engine that Google makes available. And this is in contrast to Another API that they have that allows you to embed static maps, essentially just static map images, in your web pages. Um, there may be instances where you may want to use that static ma maps API instead, but in this case we're focusing on interactive maps. 
Um, and one of the other major uh, changes in version three of the API is that it has really been rewritten from the ground up to be optimized for both desktop and mobile platforms and applications. So they've modified the code so that it is more easily deployed onto a wider variety of client platforms. So the previous version was more usable in traditional desktop computers and web browsers on those computers where they've modified it now so that the interactive maps that are published using the API or generated using the API can also be fairly effectively developed uh, to display on mobile platforms such as tablet computers or mobile phones. So here we have listed a number of links to the background information that Google publishes on their various APIs and then some more detailed reference information about the Java API in particular in terms of the home page for the JavaScript API, an introductory page that provides some basics about using the API, and also a link to the tutorial for working with the API. These are uh, valuable resources if, as you want to dig deeper into the capabilities of the Google Maps API. So as we move into now what you would be developing in terms of your uh, mapping applications, one of the first things you have to understand is that when you are adding a Google Map to your web page, what you are doing is you are creating a map object. This map, map object is a block of code that is written in JavaScript that is connected to an object in your document object model in your web page. And what that enables is the linking of the capabilities defined by the JavaScript to that object within the structure of your page. As we, have, as we discussed last week, the distinction between structure defined using HTML and behavior defined using JavaScript, this is an example of that approach where you're creating a structural element in your page, quite often a div element, giving it a name in terms of an ID value, and then writing some JavaScript that allows you to link the code written in JavaScript to that object that you've created in your HTML page. So as you're creating this map object, there are three attributes of that object that you are required to define. One is the type of map object that you want to create. And this type can be of a road map, a satellite type map, a hybrid map that really shows a combination of the satellite and road map data, or a terrain style map, which is analogous to what you might think as a topographic map, though it doesn't have all of the attributes that you might see in standard topographic maps, but it provides a uh, more uh, visualized representation of what the terrain looks like, which is different from the imagery that is available through the satellite representation or the transportation and boundaries and other sort of cartographic features that are provided through the roadmap representation. So these are the four types of maps that you have to choose from, and you have to select one of them as the foundation for your map. You're also required to provide a latitude and longitude that defines where the map should be centered when it loads. So you can use this latitude and longitude value to essentially move the map so that it is over your particular area of interest, centered on that area of interest. And this is another attribute that is required to be provided when you're creating a new app map object. Finally, you're also required to provide a zoom level. And this defines how near or far to that defined latitude and longitude from the perspective of map scale 
the initial map image is located. So essentially a zoom level of zero is a global scale map with higher values providing increasingly local views that are centered on the latitude and longitude that you provided. So Google Maps uses a set of fixed zoom levels starting at zero and typically moving to a maximum value of 18. Though the available zoom level for a particular map type is limited. So, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, there is a way for you to inquire as to the available zoom level for a particular map type that you are working with over a given area. Because that also depends on the part of the world that you're working in, as the available zoom levels will vary from region to region. But you're required to define the zoom level as a part of the process of creating the map object. Also, when you're creating a map object, you have a set of controls that you can enable or disable as a part of the process of creating your map object. And those controls allow you to present to the user capabilities to control the zoom level. So users can zoom in and out, adjusting that zoom level that you set as a default for the map object when it's created. A pan control that allows them to move the uh, visible map area north, south, east, and west. A scale control that will display the current map uh, scale as a part of the display on the screen. A map type control that allows the user to select the map type, terrain, satellite, roadmap, or hybrid and also a street view control that allows the user to enable or disable Google's street view capability, which is essentially generated by their vehicles that they have driven through regions with a, a panoramic camera and providing an interactive street level perspective for imagery at given locations in a map. These are all controls that through the definition of your map object, you can display or not display depending on what the requirements are for your particular map. Some of these controls and may also be modified in terms of defining styles for those and we will illustrate at least one of those in the examples that, that I will show later. You may also, as you're creating your map object, define the locations of the controls within the map screen. So this is something over which you can exert as a designer of your map, the layout of your page and which controls will be displayed where. And then finally, you can actually develop your own controls written in JavaScript and HTML that can be defined and then attached to locations within the map. So if there is an additional capability that you want to add to the map, using essentially the API capabilities to enhance or control the map interface, you can develop custom controls that will provide that additional interaction to the user. That is a capability that, of course, requires a higher level of JavaScript programming that we will not be covering here, but that is a potential capability that you might want to look at. In addition to the base map types that we've already talked about, satellite, roadmap, hybrid, and terrain, there are also a number of map overlays that you can define that can be essentially superimposed upon the required base map. And this is an important thing to remember because you are required to define one of four, one of the four Google map types as essentially the base map for your map. You cannot suppress the display of the background information. But you then have an option using these overlay types to superimpose on that base map a number of additional objects that are based upon information that you would like to combine with the base map that Google provides. 
And this is really the capability that provides the mashup capability. And this is a term that emerged uh, quite quite clearly in the release of the Google Maps API in 2005 and six as a way for developers to use the Google Maps interface and base maps as exactly that, the foundation for their maps where they wanted to show their own information in combination with Google's. And so we have a number of overlay types that are available to you for doing that. The first is a marker type, which is focused on the depictions of points. And you can specify the locations of those points, and you can also define the styles of those points as they are displayed using particular icons. So that is a way of displaying point location types in, type of information. There's another overlay type of a polyline, which essentially allows you to define multiple points along a linear feature. So you could have a polyline as simple as two points that define a straight line, or you could have a polyline that may be defined by hundreds of points that represent, say, a bike trail or a hiking path, or the route of a truck through a city. Those are all examples of polyline type overlays that you could potentially over combine with a Google map that is defined simply by a sequence of points, where you can also define the style for the display of that point in terms of thickness, color, etc. You can also define polygon type features. And these are closed features, you know, whether it's rectangular or a triangle or any irregular polygon that is again defined by multiple points where Google will automatically close the polygon between the first and last coordinates that are provided as the set of points. You can also, through the polygon overlay type, define multiple polygons in a single polygon. So you can actually have several distinct areas, each represented by a single polygon that are a part of a multi-polygon. And you can also define holes within polygons or donuts through the specification of the design of a particular polygon feature. And like polylines, you can also then define uh, line styles and fill styles. So you can determine the color and opacity of the fill that would uh, be used to depict a particular polygon. There are also overlay maps that can be uh, based upon images. And these are the ground overlay map overlay type where you can make reference to an image file that is available over the internet and th that you can basically superimpose over the Google information. And what you do is you register those images to the map coordinate system so that they are essentially anchored to the ground in the map interface. This is a way to potentially um, display your own information instead of Google's as a base map, um, but you want to carefully look at the terms of service for the Google Maps API to make sure that your overlay is not violating their requirements for uh, maintaining some representation of Google's content as a part of the map interface. In addition to those four overlay types, we also have three more that provide additional capabilities. One is info windows, where these are essentially content windows that can be popped up um, on top of the displayed map that allow you to essentially embed additional information in those information windows, where that information can be written in HTML or as a document object model element or a simple text string, where by defining that content, you can essentially allow your users to drill down for additional information, either for other overlay objects that you've added, 
whether they're markers, polylines, or polygons, or just at particular locations in your map where you would like to provide information, you can essentially bake that information into the system using the info window model to have that information available if the user interacts with the interface in a particular way. There are also a number of layer overlay types that provide very efficient means for linking to external data or services to be able to streamline the display of content in your Google Maps. One very popular one is the KML layer um, overlay type, where essentially if you have developed a KML file, which you can say build in a desktop GIS application, or you can even build one in Google Earth, if that KML file is put into a web accessible location, say in your home directory on the class server, and exposed to the internet as a web accessible file, you can create a KML layer in your map object that will allow for the display of the content of that KML file within your Google Maps application. So that's a nice way to be able to reuse geographic information that you've encoded in that KML format in a variety of places, including Google Maps. Google also has a layer type related to their fusion tables. And fusion tables for Google are essentially a way to have an online table that can contain a variety of attributes. And if those attributes relate to mappable information, so for example, if they contain street addresses that Google can understand and convert to geographic locations, or if they contain latitude and longitude information, or if they contain named attributes that Google can link to geographic locations like county names or state names, then you can actually add a fusion tables layer to your Google map where it will use the information from that fusion table to populate your map with features and associated attributes. Google also publishes a traffic layer and a traffic service. So this is something where you can essentially tap into the traffic information that Google is developing and publishing. You can add a traffic layer to be able to display current traffic information provided by Google on your map. And there's also a bicycling layer that provides uh, current bicycle routing information within your map. And these are both data collections that are maintained by Google and are published as services that you can add as layers to your map. Finally, you can actually uh, develop your own custom overlays where you are programmatically controlling the layers that are displayed in your system. So this is where you can use your JavaScript and HTML programming skills to define custom overlays if the available overlays that the API provides don't meet your needs. Again, this is something that is a very powerful capability that is well beyond the scope of what we will be covering in this class. Google also, through their API, publishes a number of services. And we will be talking more about services in a couple of weeks as we discuss the general concepts of services-oriented architectures. But this is an opportunity to highlight some of the services that Google publishes that you might have interest in at some point as you're uh, thinking about applications that you might want to develop. The first is a geocoding service, where essentially uh, their service provides both forward and reverse geocoding. Where in the first instance, if you provide a sufficiently complete street address, their service will return to you the corresponding estimated latitude and longitude for that street address. A reverse geocoding capability is also provided where you can actually provide a latitude and longitude and Google's service will return to you the nearest street address to that provided point. 
where there are additional options for being able to limit the the geocoding and the activities to the current viewport or a particular region. So there are additional options that you can use for this uh, geocoding process to help provide boundaries for uh, Google's attempt to match your location with an addra address or vice versa. There is a second service, which is their direct direction service, where you can essentially provide an origin and a destination and some additional options, and you'll have returned to you directions between that origin and destination and a representation of the route in a form that you can integrate, say, into Google Maps. So this is a way to essentially use the Google Maps service as a way of doing route de definition using their direction service. Google also provides an elevation service where you can provide um, either a single location or a path and Google will then return to you a data object that represents the elevation for either that single location or the path. So you could think of this as a tool where you might be able to generate a, an elevation profile for a hiking trail, for example, or for a, a, a cycle route where you've defined essentially the sequence of X and Y locations, latitude, longitude values, for the particular path that you would like that elevation profile for, you can submit that using this service and you will then be, get back the elevation data for that series of points. There's also a street view service where you can essentially create a docu document object model element within your application where you can then plug in the Google Street View content so you can interact with a Street View service to be able to display that information in your web page. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there's a maximum Zoom service where you can obtain information about the maximum available Zoom letter level for a particular map type and area so that you could potentially use that to modify the user interface to reflect the currently available maximum zoom for the data that are being viewed. Another capability provided by the Google Maps API it relates to events. And events are a general programming concept where you link user activities or other events within the web page with chunks of JavaScript code that will be executed. So you could think of an event being triggered by, say, a user clicking on a map in a particular location, where that would trigger an event and there was some information connected to that event in terms of where the user clicked or where they released their button, where they pressed the mouse button. That's all information that is captured as a part of each of those events. The mouse down, the mouse up, the mouse click, which is the combination of a mouse down and mouse up. Those are all events that can be captured within the web browser. Events that JavaScript code can be connected to so that those events can trigger some sort of action. And in the case of the Google Maps API, there are particular JavaScript um, capabilities that you can attach to events that allow you to provide um, a way to have a higher level of interaction or control by the user and by you, the web mapping programmer, um, to as a part of the uh, the application. So. You know, some examples that you might look for in terms of being able to process or handle events is changing items in the interface as the user zooms in and out on a map. So there may be interface elements that you want to show or hide depending upon the zoom level that the user selects. You may also want to have a web page 
that in addition to having the map object itself showing the interactive capabilities, you may have objects in your web page that are outside the map that you want to update based upon the state of the map. And you can use events to do that, to essentially create the connection between different object uh, document objects in your web page to each other. Um, you could also potentially use events to synchronize multiple maps uh, that might be controlled by a single master map. Um, this is sometimes used when you might want to have a sort of control map that users actually can pan and zoom, but you might have some slave maps that the user doesn't directly inter interact with, but might be showing different data based on the state of the master map. These are all examples of the types of applications that you can build using the events that are supported by the um, API. That having been said, as I've mentioned before for some other more advanced capabilities of the API, this uh, event programming approach is really a higher level of JavaScript than we will be working on here.